Good morning. Oh, we can do better than that. Come on. Good morning. All right, let's give a shout out to Mobile and Foley Campus. Come on, guys, give them a big hand. It's great to see you guys this weekend. Thanks so much for choosing to worship with us. We have a team, a medical team, that's headed to Honduras. Uh, they're going to be at our Honduras campus this afternoon in service, and then tomorrow they're going up to the Jungle Hospital, and uh, they're having a great time. The unique part is us starting our first Wednesdays. This is our first first Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be streaming that, and uh, they're going to actually, over the Jungle Hospital in Honduras, going to be able to be part of that service and interact, so we're going to give them a big shout out. So I thought that was really a unique feature to be able to offer them as they're in the villages and all over that mountainside ministering to people uh, in the medical room. Four, five, six years ago, uh, I was in Honduras, and Dr. Williams, who has been part of our lives for 20 years, uh, he texted me and he said, hey, can you come up the mountain for a couple days? We, we need to see you. And I didn't know what he was doing, but he had a setup going on. And so I, I traveled the three hours up. And when I get there, there's a, a young pastor there named Dino Rizzo. He's there with his son and a couple guys from his church. So I got to meet this guy. Uh, he was a church planter. And we had some connections, some uh, foundational connections way back in church and all this good stuff. And uh, so we got, we got connected to that, and I found out that he was a partner in the Jungle Hospital. We we're a partner in Jungle Hospital. And, and then I found out that he, he wrote a book. Uh, he actually made up a word to write the book. Uh, the word is called Servolution. And many of you have read the book, you're wearing the T-shirt. And that we, we were doing serving and outreach, and he comes along and puts this ID and identification on it. It just so fit us. It was just a wonderful experience. Uh, we are blessed this weekend to have Dino with us as our guest, and he's going to be ministering to you right now. He's serving as the executive director of ARC. Uh, ARC is Association of Related Churches. Uh, when people come in or leave here, we, we connect them to ARC. Uh, find an ARC church. It's a life-giving church. It's kind of like us. It has the same DNA. He's serving there. He's also serving as one of the pastors at Church of the Highlands in Birmingham. We're just really blessed to have with us. I want you to make Dino Rizzo welcome to our pulpit. Come on, give him a big hand. Welcome. Thanks, Pastor Jared. Thanks, Pastor. Awesome, awesome. Come on, let's clap our hands for Jesus. It's all about him. Great day to be alive. You can be seated. Oh, my goodness. I just have... Love, love, love this church. What an amazing church. And just want to welcome all those that are online, of course, at one of our campuses. Thanks so much for being a part and all the things that are happening across church life. And uh, just what an incredible, and I know you feel this way about all of your campuses, uh, what an incredible facility. I'll tell you, y'all, you've only been in here, I believe Pastor Jerry said four or five weeks, and it feels like home. And what great space. Are you enjoying your new facility? I'll tell you, what a... Amazing, amazing, and, and when I walk through the hallways in the common area, everything is first class, and it has a high tech and a high touch feeling, and more importantly, you can't walk through this facility and not sense the sacrifice and the generosity and the giving and the commitment that you've had as a people to provide more space to reach more people. And that's why we provide more space. It's more space for more souls. It's more space to reach out to those all around us. And so I know you're going to continue to do that, not only here at every campus, and growing, growing, growing to reach more people. So it is an honor uh, to be here. I love this church. I love your heart. I love the vision of this house and your care and how you, you love people in this community. And then uh, I, I just think it's a great idea to be here the week before Serve Day. Uh, we've been a part of that, and uh, that's just going to be an awesome time as you go out in the commons and sign up or go online and sign up also. I just believe it's going to transform the community. And you know what I found out? Every time I serve, I, I thank God for what I'm able to give and what I'm able to relay to other people. But at the end of the day, it normally does something in my heart. I usually receive more than I give. And, it, and it, you know, just, I just what I receive and being able to, to learn and, and grow in my life. And so a lot of times you, you feel like, well, we, we need to go out and make a difference. And you are. But it's amazing how when you go out to make a difference, the difference that it makes in your own life, in your own family, in your relationships. So I know you're going to be a part of that. And hopefully all of you will carve out time and make that a priority next weekend for your serve day. 
and just love your pastors and the family. I love pastors that have the same name. Come on, Jerry and Jerry. You just kind of work it. I just like that. That would not work for me and my wife, Dino and Dino. You would not want to do that. And uh, so just, just love your pastors and their heart. It is awesome when you meet a pastor for the first time on the mission field. That just You just feel a direct connection, and you have really have done so much at the Jungle Hospital. and We've come alongside of that with so many other churches and what you're doing and just the vision that your pastor has to make a difference and to care about the next generation and to reach out to people to keep, keep growing. And he's been a great friend to, to me and our family. And I just thank God for your pastors. Can we clap our hands for our pastors and thank God for them? They're just awesome, awesome, awesome. Love them, love them, the real deal. And uh, it is an honor to be here. Our family has relocated to uh, Birmingham and bring you greetings from, from Birmingham. It's a tough thing to be an LSU fan living in Birmingham. There ain't no love for purple and gold. I'm telling you that right now. But I'm not giving in if you know what I'm talking about. And so uh, we're enjoying it there, Church of the Highlands. Uh, having a lot of fun there with the Dream Centers and all of our outreach that we do at our 11 campuses and continuing to make a difference and be a part of that with Pastor Chris Hodges. And then I love leading ARC, uh, planting churches. And so last year alone, we planted 90 churches all across the United States. We're starting to do some international. Just the beginning of this year, January and February, we planted right at 24 churches. You're a part of that. You're giving, your sacrifice. The leadership of this church takes a portion of that, helps us plant other churches across the United States. And we planted right out about 485 churches. And this weekend, last week we planted four churches. This week we'll plant one church in Flint, Michigan. And it is two degrees there. How many are glad you're not in Flint, Michigan? God bless you, church planter. Help you, Lord. Amen. And, uh, but uh, they're having a great day. So thanks a lot for helping us plant churches reaching people. Our family is doing well. And so we bring you greetings from the Rizzo family. I got a picture of our family and show you kind of a little update. That's my daughter on the end. Uh, she is a junior at LSU and uh, doing well. And then that's our baby in the middle, uh, uh, Isabella, Bella, Bella. She's, she's, a, she's in eighth grade. And then that is our son, and uh, he's a senior and getting ready to go play some football next year at a school in Florida. Matter of fact, he's here and he's on the front row. He came with me. He's my travel buddy. And uh, so proud of my son. Just love my son. And then also got another friend here, Jeff Rents, who's been a lifelong friend. And then that is my wife. Uh, Delyn Monique. I call her once a while, what's up, Neek? And just kind of go like that. But uh, we've been married 26 years. That woman has been married to me 26 years. Why don't we give her a hand clap? Amen. And uh, that is Delyn. So that's our family, having a lot of fun. And uh, I love what you're doing with Serve. I love what you're doing with Serve uh, you, you take it and make it better. I'm telling you that. I tell people all around the country, I was talking to a pastor this week, and he was talking about learning how to serve the community. And Pastor Jerry, I used Bay as a reference church to talk about serving the community. And you're an example church. You're a model church. People are coming here to learn. When church planters in this area want to learn, uh, I'm pointing them here to Bay community as you make a difference in people's lives. So uh, thank you so much for being an amazing church. If you have your Bible, I'm going to read a, a verse, uh, a couple of verses out of 1 Timothy, uh, the last chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 6. And then I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about the idea of you and I giving our life away. Uh, the blessing and the mandate of Jesus to give our life away. Give your life away. Uh, I, I believe that's where you find uh, the goodness and the mercy of God is when you decide not to make it all about me, myself, and I, but to make it about him and to make it about them. And I, I just think that's the, 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 the life of God. And so it tells us this in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 17, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope, this is the world we live in, in wealth, which is so uncertain. God, is that not a, is that not a verse for truth? But to put their hope, I love that word hope, their hope in God, who is richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good. This is a phrase I've highlighted. To be rich in good deeds. I believe this church is rich in good deeds. To be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. 
That's what Paul is saying. Be willing to share, to give your life away. Verse 19, in this way they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of life that is truly life. Everyone's looking for the purpose and the meaning of life, trying to enrich their life, trying to add to their life, trying to build their life. And here the Bible says that one of the ways that you really find the true meaning of life is when you give your life away to others. Others, others, others. You don't make it about me, myself, and I, but about him and about them. So let's talk about that for a few minutes. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for this amazing church, all that you're doing across campus and church life. And Lord, we just pray that you mark our hearts today. Lord, we thank you that we're, we're here. We're meant to be here in these moments. Thank you for our time of worship and our time of prayer. Lord, we thank you for our pastors and their heart for people. So Lord, I just pray for every person who's, who's here today or watching online, Lord. I pray that you would touch every heart. Lord, thank you that you're aware of what's happening in our life. You're aware of the different seasons and the things going on. You're aware of the ups and the downs, the good and the bad. So Lord, I pray that you'd speak to every heart. It's amazing how your word can go forward in a moment like this, and it can just land exactly where we need it. So let it be a day like that, and then let it propel us to serve for the cause of Jesus Christ. We love you, we love you, we love you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said a good amen. Why don't you turn to the person next to you and say, I'm glad you made it to church today. Come on, look at that other person that was your second choice, and tell them, you look like you could use a lot of church. Now you know you're the second choice. I was not raised in church. My, my dad was a good uh, Italian Catholic, and we, we were raised in a little city called Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, my, and we were in tourism, and my, my mother was a Baptist, and we didn't go to church much because we were working so, so much a family business, and so I uh, didn't know a lot, knew some things. Uh, every once in a while, we'd go to church at Christmas and go to church at Easter, and then we'd switch it up, go to the Baptist church at Christmas, and Catholic Church at Easter. Next year we go to the Catholic Church at Christmas, Baptist Church at Easter. And so people would ask me, what religion? I would say, I'm Baptist. I'm both. We do both. We just, we're Catholic and Baptist. And so, but we had really never uh, had an encounter with Christ. Didn't really understand, uh, had bits and pieces of it. Was not real clear on the plan of salvation or, or really any of those things. And, um, but at 18 years old, uh, a church did an outreach in our community uh, that was not from our community. They came from a, a, another city, uh, just about an hour up the road. And, and this church just did an outreach. Uh, went out on the, on the beach and uh, carried a cross up and down the beach. I was working on the beach, and, and they just went and carried a cross, and then they gave out these little sheets of paper. And they were, they were kind, I'd seen that before, but most of the time it was a little harsh, and it was a little angry, and I was very turned off by that. And so, but these people were a little different. They actually looked like they were enjoying themselves, and they were friendly, and they were having a good time, and they were passing out these little sheets of white paper. I didn't know what it was, but I saw so many people throw them down on the ground. And later on that day, I had a conversation with one of their leaders, and we had a great conversation, and, and uh, it it, and, and he gave me one of these sheets of paper. And even though there were hundreds that were blowing down the beach or on the sidewalk, I, for some reason, stuck that sheet of paper in my pocket. And I, I kind of knew that God was dealing with me, and I'd had a, a couple friends talk to me about coming to church, and I just was, there was a little bit of a void in my own life and a little bit of, of a scatteredness and uneasiness about life and, and, and different things. And so three weeks later, I, I came in one night. I had been reading that little sheet of paper. Later on, I found out that, that church language, it was called a, a gospel track, a track. Maybe you've never heard that, but that's what they called it, a track. And, and I had it by my nightstand, and I would read it and throw it away and put it in the trash can. And my Baptist mother would take it out of the trash can and unfold it, put it by my nightstand, because she knew I was a heathen. I, I was in bad trouble. So she, you know, so one night I, I came in uh, and, and just was out of the place, had no business being at, and involved with things I had no business being involved with, and just felt empty. And it was almost like there was just this awakening. Something happened in my heart that night. I don't know what it was. I, I just believe God just loved me enough to just, just get my attention. And I remember going home that night, and, and, and I, I read the, the back of that little sheet of paper and, and read the whole thing, and on the back of it, there was a prayer. And I got to that prayer, and it said, if you would like to receive Christ as your Savior, 
pray this prayer. And me being a good old Catholic boy, I knelt down. I didn't, it didn't ask for me to kneel, but when you're Catholic, you're kneeling. Come on, somebody. I mean, it's just, what y'all want to do? Let's kneel. Okay, we're good. And so I just knelt down by my bed, and, and I prayed the prayer on the back of a sheet of paper. On June the 21st, 1982, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Why do I tell you that? Because that's a church I've never been to, people I've never met. But they had an idea. They had a heart to reach out to people. They wanted to do what Jesus did. The Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. They wanted to reach out to people. And, and today I'm here at this amazing church and a church that has that heart and a church that's making a difference because a church like this had in its value, had in its DNA the idea to reach out to people. And I am the product, I'm the fruit of a creative idea. You can really say that I am the, I am the fruit of a serve day that a church did in the community. See, I believe when you look at Scripture, all across Scripture, you see our Savior constantly taking his disciples on a journey. They just didn't stay in one location. They were going from village to city to different moments, and Jesus was always taking his disciples, reaching out to people. I love all of those moments. And one of my favorite, and I want us to bring our attention to it, is in Matthew chapter 15. It's one of my favorite windows into the relationship that Jesus had with his disciples in teaching them, and I believe it teaches us also, it brings application to our life in the here and now, about giving your life away, giving, uh, just relaying what he has done in you and for you to other people. This is a great story of it. It's in Matthew chapter 15, verse 29. It says, Jesus left there and ran along the Sea of Galilee, and he went up on a mountainside, and he sat down. And great crowds came to him, bringing the lame. Look, I love this list. The lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others 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 i love being in a church that one of the priorities of the church is others 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 many others and they laid them at his feet what an interesting place to lay the hurting the feet of jesus the bible says how jesus respond he healed them he put them back together again The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking and the crippled made well, the lame walking and the blind seeing. And the result was they praised the God of Israel. I love that scene. I love how it's outside. I love how uh, it's all kinds of people. I love that it's a list of people that could not get there. They could not get there themselves. They had to have help. I love how other people did not come empty-handed. But when they came to the meeting... When, 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 they, when this started happening, they started thinking of other people. They started thinking of someone down the street. They started thinking of a relative. And this meeting went on and on. I love how Jesus was loving all kinds of people, how he was just outside loving people. And you know one of the things I think is amazing? You'll find out as we read this story that this moment went on for three days. Think about it. Three-day church service. Could you imagine Pastor Jerry getting up saying, good, good to see y'all this morning. Amen. Turn to the book of Luke. I'm going to share a little thought. I'm going to go for about 72 hours. <laughs> so we'll be here for three days. 12 hours, most of y'all be gone. After a day, y'all call the police. He's lost his mind. <laughs> Cameramen, people at the campus, you know, it's crazy. I mean, three days that these meetings, are, I don't know why it went on for three days. Sometimes, my, and I have a big imagination, I think one of the reasons why is because once someone got their healing and got their help and got their peace, I believe they thought, I cannot, I cannot just keep this to myself. I can't just hold on to this. There's, there's my cousin. There's, there's that person down the street who has this son. There's, there's this person in the next village that, that is struggling with this. And, and I've got to go get them because they've got to share in what I've received. Can I have a good amen? So it went on and on and on. Why? Because once they received it from him, it made them think of a them. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is what salvation, that's what this whole thing's about. That's what you've been about for 17 years. What you receive from him, we give to them. One of the best places to be is just in a place of relaying. Some people talk to me sometimes, but Pastor Dean, I'm just so scared to talk to people about the Lord and and to go out and serve and to do this. I don't have a sermon. I I don't know a benediction. I I don't don't know how to do those things. Let me tell you something. Do you know what witnessing and sharing your faith is? Just telling people what God has done for you. 
That's all it is. Just showing people what God has done for you. It's just receiving from him the forgiveness and the love and the grace and the help and how he's helped our marriage and how he's helped me navigate parenting and how he helped me in a dark time of my life when I was fighting an addiction or going through a time of depression in my life. and When I, I felt helpless and I felt hopeless in my life, God Almighty intervened and loved me and cared for me when I was unlovable and, and no one was there for me. The Lord comforted me. All it is is taking what you receive from him and just distributing and relaying to someone else and that's exactly the journey that Jesus takes us on you see in this next portion of scripture the Bible says that when this is going on Jesus calls the disciples to himself and he says I have compassion for these people they've already been with me three days and have nothing to eat I do not want to send them away hungry for they will collapse on the way I find that so interesting that, that that's what got the Lord's attention. Out of all the, thing that's hap- all the things that are happening on that hillside, that's, you know, when, when Jesus called the disciples, they're everywhere, man. They're managing people. Some scholars believed that there was 20,000 people on that hillside. That's a whole lot of people. And so when Jesus just saw it and he just said, disciples, and Thomas, come here, Peter. Quit arguing. Come over here, you know. Uh, Bartholomew, come in. Come here. He called the disciples to himself. Hey, hey, oh, oh. oh okay, Jesus, hey, Jesus, Jesus, Philip, Jesus needs us. And now, yeah, what, what, Lord, we're just lining people up and trying to help people. It's just crazy. It's amazing. You know, we've been here three days. Are we done yet? Are we, are we, are we getting ready to shut this meeting down? Is, is, you know, are we leaving the building? What are we doing here? And, 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 and Jesus says, guys, hold up, hold up. Listen, listen. I have compassion on the people. We, we see that. That's, that's, that's obvious. Um, they're hungry. They've been here three days. Kept them along, mid-time. They've been here. And, and I'm afraid that when we break this meeting and we're getting ready to shut this thing down, and I'm afraid that when they're on their way home, they're just going to be a little faint. And some of them may collapse on the way home because we didn't bring enough goldfish and the backpack ran out of Twizzlers and we just people hungry and, and they, they, they're going to be faint on the way home. Isn't it amazing that that would stir the heart of Jesus? And so the disciples are like, well, what, 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 what you want me to do? And, and I love how he, he asked them the question. Look at this dialogue. His disciples answered and said, where could we get enough bread in this? And I love how they remind him in this remote place, hello, we're in the middle of nowhere, where in the world could we buy enough bread to feed all these people? There's such a crowd, we didn't expect this. So we're good, we're out, we're done. And Jesus went back with a question. How many loaves do you have? And I love their answer. It's, have you ever been in a conversation and someone's trying to one-up you? It's almost like they're kind of one up, And so Jesus asks them back, what do, you, what do you have? What do you have? And look at the question. Uh, seven? We have seven, Jesus. Count them, seven. 17,000. Seven. Few little fish. Are we done? And look what Jesus says. He says, great. Tell the crowd to sit down on the ground. He took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them, and he gave them not to the people. He gave them to his disciples. I give them to my disciples, and they in turn to the people. That is the plan of the gospel. What God has done in me, what God has done for me, what he has given me through forgiveness and love and grace and a second chance and mercy and help, I give to those around me. What I've received, I give. What does the Bible say? It's more blessed to to give than it is to receive. I pass it along. I I take what he has given me. I I, I take what's been handed to me. I I, I take what, what, what he has blessed me with, and I pass it along. And what a great day. Thank God for the gospel of Jesus Christ that comes to us so that we can bring it to another, 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 another. I love how the Lord does that. I love how God will use us. 
And I believe God is going to use you like never before as a church. As you, as you launch out next weekend, as you launch out through small groups, as, as you just continue to be a church and a people that just notices others, notices the need, and then responds to the need. I love the application. I just want to give you a little bit of application out of this scripture. I believe will will encourage us about giving our life away, being a people that give our life away. Here's the first thing that I learned in this story is that you and I have someone to love. You and I have someone to love. There's there's somebody for you to love. There's something about you. There's, There's something just about your story and your journey and your timeline and your good and your bad and what's happened in your life and what you've walked through and and your test and your trial and maybe your struggle or your suffering. There's just something about you. You're unique. You're special. There's no one like you the way your personality is, your quirks, your awkwardness. Come on, your craziness. Everybody got a little crazy. Everybody got a little touch of crazy. And there's just the way you communicate and the way you, you see things and the way you, you say it. And, you know, you always say it like this, you know, just whatever. You know, I don't know what it is, but there's just the way you do your manners and just the way you hold your shoulder. You just hold your shoulder like that. And just the way you kind of do your foot and just the way you tell a story and, you know, or, or just the way you talk quiet. You just, when you get real serious, you talk quiet. Or the way you pray, when you pray, you just always say, Father God, Father God, Father God, God. And I don't know what it is, but there's just something about you. There's something about you, 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 that you can love somebody that maybe I can't love. You have a burden, you have a passion. There, there's somebody you notice that somebody else would not notice. There's somebody that your heart goes out to that maybe my heart would not go out to. There's just something about you and the way God has made you and wired you and put you together and been with you through your struggle and walked with you through a painful time in your life or, or, or walked with you through a, a, a challenge in your life. There's something about you that you can love someone like nobody else can love. Oh, thank God. You know how it works. We go through things in our life that we wish we would never go through. We walk through a season in our life. We have a mistake. There's something that goes on. There's a pain. There's a struggle. And, and in the middle of it, you can't stand it. How, you and I both, though, that we go through times in our life we wish that would never happen in our life. There are times we could go through our life that we hate it. I can't stand this. I don't like this. I would not have chosen this. I, I would not want this in my life. I, I, I don't like going through this. It doesn't make any sense that I'm having to face this. And I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Isn't it amazing that you can go through something like that in your life, in your marriage, or raising kids, or at work, or in a struggle, and then all of a sudden you start getting out of it somehow or another through grace and mercy and through perseverance and, and prayer and your pastor and your small group, you start getting out of it. And so something that you could not stand, something that you wish would have never happened, all of a sudden six months or 16 months, you look back at it and you see the story of God. Can I have a better amen? You see the hand of God. It was Romans 8, 28. No, it was not good, but oh, how my Lord worked it for good for the purpose of my life. Then all of a sudden you find yourself at a restaurant with someone and you start telling them the lessons and the love of God that you found in the middle of it. And now they're like, oh, that's helping me. Wow, that encourages me. Why? Because there's someone for you to love. The second thing that I think is application out of this story is you have something to give. Something about your life, your time, your talent. Your treasure, there's, I wrote it down like this. Something you possess can bless someone else. There's just something you have. If you'll let go of it, if you'll give your life away, if if you'll let go, if you'll keep your hands open, Lord, whatever I have, I put it in circulation for the cause of Christ. You know, when I I was about 20 years old, I'd been a Christian for about two years, and, 
you know, I was just, just kind of, you know, and I was in a little small church, and, and it was a little tiny church, and, you know, I just, just loved it, loved my pastor. He, he's a long-winded preacher. Brother, preach on and on, do a whole series on Sunday. I mean, I mean he, you thought he was landing the plane, he'd take off for another whole trip to Montana. And, I mean, if you told him, preach on, preach, he'd say, I plan on preaching on. And, I mean, it just, we, for hours, brother, preach for hours. Start like 10.30, get out like, like, like 2.30. We like the last ones, the Popeyes. Come on, somebody. It just, anyway, can we go? Can we leave? But I loved him. Oh, I loved him. He'd tell me the tree's old school. He was one of those preachers, you don't like it, don't let the back door hit you in the backside. There's five people waiting on your seat outside. Where are they? Because there's like 30 of us. He's old school, though. He'd let, he'd get, let me tell you something. He'd just get it. He'd get to preach it and wouldn't finish it. Said, let me tell you something. Did he say something just then? He's old school. Didn't care. He'd, he'd confront you like John the Bad. Just confront you. One day he stopped me and he said, he said, you always wearing these nice clothes up in here? Got these skateboards and these surfboards and riding bicycles. Got you a new car out there. He said, are you a giver? Well, yeah. I, mean, I gave last week. I gave a dollar. I mean, I was 20 years old making a lot of money. I mean, working for my daddy, Italian man, making cash money. Like four or $500 a week making cash money. I'd get it in like $10 bills so I could just have a little roll. Like, what's up? Need some cash money up in here. He told me one day, he said, he said, you are selfish. You're not a giver. God will never bless your life. You're holding on to stuff so tight. He talked about tithing and giving and releasing and learning how to live with an open spirit and an open heart that when you live a generous life, you live a large life. I didn't know anything about that. I remember that Sunday night, a few weeks later, there was a lady that came to uh, the church and she was a missionary to China. Goodness gracious, Pastor Jerry, this was 30 years ago. Isn't it amazing when you can say 30 years you can say longer than that, but we won't talk about that. I'm, I'm just joking. I honor the pastor. He's, he's much older than I am. Uh, but anyway, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But uh, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, so I, she, she, Bible's in China. And she shared her heart, and she talked about how there were villages in China that had one set of Scripture, and that each family would use it once or twice a year. Or maybe there were, there were people that never got to have Scripture. She said, for $10, I'll never forget it, for $10, you can buy a Bible, and we, will, we, we, we work with the organization, we will distribute it to families in China who do not have Scripture. I remember my heart was moved. I just thought about the few Bibles I had and all the Bibles we had. Out, and and, and, she's, and we, she prayed and said, the, the, whatever you want to do. And I thought, I'm going to buy a Bible. And I got paid that day. I'm going to buy a Bible. I'm going to buy one Bible. $10. I'm going to buy a Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Halle, hallelujah. Praise him. And as that bucket, that container started coming down my aisle, I'll never forget it. It's 20 years old. As this started coming down my aisle, I heard in my spiritual ear, in my spiritual eye, I heard, give it all. Give it all. All I can think about is the devil is in the church. <laughs> Where the devil at? Where the devil hiding at the keyboard? I, rebu I, start, I, I was like, I rebuke thou. I rebuke thou, Beelzebub. Beelzebub, I rebuke you. And, that's, and that container started coming towards me. I had just gotten paid $400 in my money, cash money in my pocket. Give it all. Give it all. And that container started coming towards me. And like it started growing like, hello, hey, I'm coming for you. And as it came in front of me, I never forget, I reached in my pocket and dropped all that $400 in that container. And as it went, as it went by me, it was like those little dollar bills got up on the side of that container. We're going to China! I'll see you in China! Lord, I'm going to Jesus, God. What, what was happening? I, I told my pastor that three or four days later. I said, Pastor, I want you to know. I gave it all. It's rough. I'm dying. He said, son, what you don't realize, you will never be a good dad. You will never be a decent husband. 
You'll never lead a small group. You'll never make an impact for Jesus if you live a selfish life. He looked right at me. He said, you've got to live with your hands open. There is something about you. There's something that you have that can bless someone else. Thank God for a church that gives you that opportunity. Thank God for a pastor who calls you to a high commitment. Who would ever want to be in a church of low commitment? Not me. Thank God for a high commitment environment. And then the last thing, and I'll finish with this, that I really believe that Jesus is teaching, and I believe he's teaching us this in the world that we live in, is that you have an eternity to impact. You and I have an eternity. We get to take from him the, the cross, the forgiveness, the love of God, and we get to share it with other people that impacts their eternity. I truly believe that. I still believe that with all of my heart, that God Almighty entrusts us with the greatest story and the greatest news ever to people who desperately need it, that Jesus loves them, and that Jesus died for them, and that he can give them a new beginning. You and I have an eternity to impact because you just never know. You never know when you got on a serve day. You never know when you reach out to someone. You never know when you pass something along. You never know a prayer. You never know uh, a, a serve. You never know something you give, a lunch you buy, a coffee that you buy, uh, across the street, set of brownies that you bring to a neighbor. You just never know a car that you deliver, a hospital visit, a yard you cut, a car you wash, a visit to the nursing. You just never know how God uses things like that to impact someone's eternity. You just never know. You know, we started our church with just a handful of people who just didn't know anything when we were pastoring. We pastored a church in 20 years in, in Baton Rouge. and We started it, planted it, my wife and I, and uh, just didn't know anything. We, we planned it on a Wednesday night because I was a youth pastor, so everything happened on Wednesday night. Let's, let's start it on Wednesday night. Bad idea. And, uh, and I had never preached a full sermon. I'd done youth. So you just kind of preach a little bit and kind of it's a rambling thought and then you just give an altar call and kids get saved and then you go out and you know and, and throw water balloons at each other and it's boy God moved I mean it was it's awesome when you're a youth pastor and so I didn't I didn't know anything but I had to preach a sermon my first sermon there were 12 people when we started our church and I remember I preached my whole sermon I had like 50 pages of in 10 minutes. I was like, okay, what do I do? It's 10 minutes and the clock's ticking, I got like 30 minutes left. I re-preached it two more times, the same exact sermon. <laughs> It was horrible. And I got done. I was like, amen. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> and f the, the 12 people were there. Five people notified me the next day. I don't think I'm going to take this journey. It was just, it was like a roller coaster, a bad one. And we started our church. Jeff Rents, one of my friends here, was, was one of those, those few to start with. So we reached out. To, we just had a heart like, like you do as a church. We just wanted to make a difference. We just wanted to help people. And I remember we started doing some creative ideas and, and doing some serving. And, 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 and I remember my wife came to me. She said, I, I just read a little book, and I got an idea. And she said, I want to go out to red lights uh, and, 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 and intersections and give out cold water or, or ice cold Cokes and tell people that God loves them. And we do too. If you ever need anything, she, she had this idea. She'd read this little book, uh, Conspiracy of Kindness, Goodness, 20 years ago. Just said, I just want to do this as a church. It's like, cool, great, we're doing other things. and We got time, let's do it. And so we started going out to, to intersections, and we printed these little cards and put little signs on the road, free Cokes, free water. We'd ice them down during the day, and we'd bring, you know, mostly it was me and my wife and about 10, 15 young adults, and we'd go out there and we'd knock on car windows. Hey, you like a free water, free, free ice cold Coke? And we'd always say, you look too thirsty to pass. And, you know, it's hot, it's hot 30 here in Baton Rouge, and we're here for you. You know, people, you know, 90% of them would roll, oh, thank Thank you so much. Some people want to give you money. We're like, no, 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 no. And then some people were terrified, like, <laughs> Bluetooth, police. <laughs> then what you knock on, hey, we like, uh, oh gosh. You know, it's just panic. And, you know, so we, we it was, it was, and I, me, me being a little ADD, I was loving it. And so, you know, you're out in the traffic and, you know, you know, police arresting you is fantastic outreach. And so, you know, and so we did that for, we were doing that. And so it just started growing. And one Friday afternoon, we were at the church, we were washing out our ice chest. And we'd given out 2,200 Cokes, probably another 2,000 bottles. It was a great afternoon. We were having a blast, and we were reaching people. And, 
And people are starting to come to our church. And, hey, aren't you the church that gives away Cokes and gives out a bottle of water? And, you know, we just want to come see. Lady pulls up in this old broken down beater truck. Just, <laughs> and she's, she gets out and slams the door. And we were watching. I just, hey, what's up? Hey, how y'all done? I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. Macomb, Mississippi. Well, who's in charge of you? I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. I was like, well, I am. She's like, okay, I, 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 I need to tell you something. I, I, we do outreach in Macomb, Mississippi. Well, how, how, how's that working for you? Well, this is what we do. We go up to Walmart in Macomb, Mississippi, and, we, and we, I, I get up in the back of this here truck, I bullhorn. Uh, when you hear bullhorn, <laughs> hold up, bullhorn. We got to get them this here back of this truck with bullhorn. I just preach, tell everybody they're going to hell, and we, these kids are there, and they, it's awesome. And then we run down the street, and they, they run from us and hide behind Rite Aid, and we pull up behind Rite Aid. And I get my bullhorn, y'all going to hell, y'all going to hell. It's awesome. And then, and then we go to Sonic, and then the police come. We get in fights and argument. We debate them and tell them they're all going to hell, and it's awesome. You sh- she said, but it ain't working. <laughs> no, it ain't working. She said, I want to try this. I said, it's easy. I just, we explained to her in five minutes. Gave her a couple of the cards. Month later, we're washing out Ice Chef. Late in the afternoon, we're all leaving. Truck pulls up. How y'all doing? I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> totally. She said, I got to tell you something. She said, preacher, we went out on a Friday night, left our bullhorn in the truck. And we went out and stayed in our park, wall in our parking and we loved on kids, and we just told them how much God loves them, prayed with them, gave them free Cokes, Ice Town Cokes, and just gave out Cokes all night long. Free. People started hearing about it, started coming to Walmart, getting free Cokes. Just other kids started coming. We just had a great time. We've been doing that. Said about a week later, on Sunday night, I had a little small church. Said on Sunday night, there was a, a mom and two daughters that came in our church on a, on a, on a Sunday morning. At the close of our service, our, our, our preacher asked for prayer, and, and that mom and those two daughters came forward for prayer. And they, uh, they got, they, they were, our preacher prayed, and they received Christ. And, and it was just, it, it, she said, it was wonderful. And, that, and that, then that Sunday night, they brought their dad back. And they sat in the back of the church, that dad with that, that mom and those two daughters. And he came forward at the close of the service and, and had not been in a church in 20-something years. And our preacher got to pray with him. And that man received Christ. He said, and he looked at the preacher and said, I had to come see a church that would give our family a Coke for free. He was a hard man. He said, no one's ever given us anything. And I had to come see were you for real. And boy, they had a moment. They prayed together as a family. They were all getting scheduled to be baptized the following weekend. But on Wednesday morning, that dad, that husband, did not wake up. He went to be with Jesus. Now, I'm not trying to be theatrical or trying to move you with emotion. This is what happened. The funeral was later on that week. At the funeral, at the close of the service, everything was finished. The preacher went down, stood at the head of that casket. The mom and the two daughters get up, and they brought four Coke cans. And they set it on top of that casket. And she looked at that preacher and looked at that church and said, thank you for loving us enough to give us a Coke, and now my husband is with Jesus. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you? Listen to me. Listen. Amen. Never underestimate your serve. You never know. You never know. You never know. Give your life away. Give your life away. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. And Lord, what an honor it is to be in a relationship with this church. It's an honor for Dylan and I and Jeffrey to be here today. What a great church. But what a great God we serve who came to us You reached out to us, lost, so unlovable, so messed up. But you reached, you reached through your son, Jesus. We found grace. We found a fresh start. We found you. 
Lord, we get the opportunity now of giving our life away for the cause of Jesus Christ. Lord, let us be found faithful giving our life away. In Jesus' name. Can we give the Lord a hand clap for that message? Yeah. I love those stories. I could listen to them all day long. Because to me, that's where ministry is taking place, is outside of the walls. Not that it can't inside. You may have been touched by that message and you may be thinking, you know, I, I don't know Christ. I, I, I haven't really made him Lord of my life. And you can do that in just a minute. We'll give you an opportunity to do that. The other side of our thinking sometimes is you think, well, all these things we do outside in that nursing home, in that prison, over in the light of the village and over here in that area, all these areas, what good? I mean, you know, they're going to drink the Coke and they're going to run away. They're going to go. They're going to do their thing. We give them some food. They're hungry again tomorrow. I want you to understand something. God is the ultimate scorekeeper. And anything and everything you do, he keeps record of. And I know that here we're to be blessed and have a blessed life and have resources and he wants us to be blessed. But he also tells us that we're building up a treasure and resources and blessing in heaven by doing what? by loving and serving other people. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I wish I knew all the stories. And I think what's really going to be cool about heaven, I think we'll be able to go and, and look it up or track it or whatever and find out some of the stories that we have no idea that happened just because of a bottle of water, just because you, you, you raked that senior citizen jar. To me, if Jesus would hear, were here, He'd be leading his disciples doing that. He's not here, but we're his disciples. And he just says, hey, you guys go do this. You go do this. So I want to encourage you to be part of Serve Day. I want, you to, I want you to be part of that. Sign up. Be part of it. also want to encourage you, if you don't know Christ, we want to pray with you. Our leaders will be coming to the front in just a moment. And if there's anything we can pray with you about, we want to pray with you in agreement and pray we're here for you. So I want you to stand. We're going to be dismissed. Everybody good? Would, would you look at the person beside you? Would you now, now look back at me. Look at them. Now look back at me. Don't you think they look better now than when the service started? So I want you to tell them that now. Go ahead and you're dismissed. Tell them. You look better now. God bless you. Have a great week. We love you.